Engaging with the community since 1970. This is WIS Awareness. Our hair is a metaphor for how complex and how diverse we are. With Billie Jean Shaw. Our hair and our history and our heritage are connected. A Crown Act Special. Happy Sunday to you and welcome to Awareness. I'm your host, Billie Jean Shaw. You are in tune today for a special treat. We're downtown Sumter outside of the Clyburn Beauty Salon where we're bringing awareness to you today about the Crown Act. Now the Crown Act stands for Create a Respectful and Open World for Natural Hair. It's a push to help end race-based hair discrimination and has passed in several states and uh, municipalities and counties across the country. Now a group is hoping to pass the Crown Act in Sumter County. Today on Awareness, I introduce you to one of the founders of the Sumter Crown Act Coalition. Our hair goes up and out. No one else's hair does that. It's magical. It is. <laughs> it defies gravity. Yeah. Right? And, and then in a minute, you go to that basin, you wash it, blow dry it, put a hot comb through it, and, it's, and you got a bob that can swing. So that that's our secret sauce. Michaela Angela Davis is the executive director and creator of Hulu's The Hair Tales. Braided locks. Twist out. Hot comb. Black. Resilient. Black hair is both stigmatized and celebrated. A documentary celebrating the strength of the strands in a black woman's hair through personal hair tales from powerhouse guests like Oprah, Chloe Bailey, Tracy Ellis Ross, and Issa Rae. Their hair journeys picking apart the societal and historical pressures that come with rocking their crown. This struggle around our history is so important and it's all connected. Our hair and our history and our heritage are connected. So resisting our hair and resisting our history is the same resistance. It's resisting our existence. As you can see, Davis is passionate. She has never turned a blind eye to the stigma surrounding black women and natural hair. Even in her roles as fashion editor of Essence Magazine and as a contributor on CNN. I'm an image activist. An image activist is to be in action about defining your own image. And Billie Jean, I, listen, mm -hmm. I am really aware that I can wear my hair like this mm -hmm. and I could wear my hair like this on CNN because of my proximity to whiteness. And I know that when I was in the news with an Afro, I knew what I was doing mm -hmm. and what that represented, but I also knew why it was allowed. It's blonde, I'm light-skinned. So I, I understand the politics of- It was of, a look, it, it attracted it, viewers. And it made it, it made it seem it was cool. cool. Like, yeah. Mm -hmm. And it wasn't, it wasn't scary. And there's something about our hair signifies who we are, whose we are, where we came from. And when you dare to wear it in its natural state, that means we have stopped trying to make you comfortable. Mm -hmm. And we have started to express who we are without fear, without fear of not being hired. Because that was one of the main reasons why people laid their hair down in the first place. You know, do it after the civil rights movement. If you look at footage from the civil rights movement, a lot of women, their hair was pressed and straight. They had to get jobs. Those same pressures from the 1960s still linger today. Across the nation, black women and men discriminated against because of their hair. A high school wrestler in New Jersey forced to cut his locks right before a match because his hair was too long, according to the referee. A 12-year-old in Birmingham, Alabama, ordered to sit away from her friends as a punishment for breaking uniform policy. Why? Because of her braids. And here at home. In my lifetime, I've had locks, twists, and colon rolls, so I've definitely experienced some discrimination. A Midlands man reflects on the time that he was denied access to a bar in Columbia's Five Points because of his hair. There was a time period in Five Points where certain clubs and bars wouldn't let people in that had locks, twists, corn rolls, braids, or what have you. And um, there was actually a time when I was in the line and I was told I couldn't get in because my hair was in corn rolls. And 
that was basically another way to keep black people out of their establishment. So it seems like braids are really an issue for people. Across state lines in North Carolina, a 16-year-old says she was sent home from a Concord Chick-fil-A for wearing blonde braids. In Chick-fil-A. Chick-fil-A. I... <sighs> yeah. You can't even... No, it's hard. I mean, the words, it's right? It almost <laughs> sounds like a... It almost sounds like a, um, a joke. Yeah. You, but it's not. They do it because there's a history of controlling black bodies. And she's right. If you if you look at American history, we had to have a law that said that black and whites can go to school together. That's right. We had to have a law to say that black people can vote. That's we right. had to have a law to say that black people deserve the same opportunity in the world of mm -hmm. employment like you. There's all these laws to give black people the same rights. Now there's a new policy Davis is helping to push into law. It's called the Crown Act. Crown is an acronym which stands for Create a Respectful and Open world for natural hair. It's a law that stops race-based hair discrimination, which is the denial of employment and educational opportunities because of hair textures or protective hairstyles. That includes braids, locks, twists, or bantu knots. Currently, the Crown Act is a statewide law in 24 states. In other states, only certain counties have passed it. In South Carolina, the Crown Act is not law. Filed during the 2021-2022 legislative session, the bill did not receive a subcommittee hearing. According to Representative Campbell Garvin, one of the authors of the proposed bill, bipartisan support will be needed in order for the Crown Act to be signed into law. Davis, a D.C. native with roots in Sumter County, is now working to change that. Over the summer, she and a group founded the Sumter Crown Act Coalition. Their mission is to make the Crown Act law statewide, starting in Sumter. You know, what we have found, particularly here in, in Sumter and in South Carolina, people just did not know. They didn't know that it was possible to be discriminated against because of, of race-based bias. That there can be policy that can protect children and adults and students from that, what we're really seeing between history and hair is the courage of a community growing strong enough to assert who we are and not being afraid. And there's backlash for show. It's just not hoses and dogs, it's policy. When we return, meet the founders of the Sumter Crown Act Coalition and hear more on their push to end hair discrimination. You're watching Awareness. We'll be right back. Thank you.